Oh man, I can't feel my testicles. I know, I know what you're thinking. Big deal! I can't feel your testicles too. Well, no. Trust me. It's much worse when it's your boys that are missing in action. How did I get here? To this situation you ask? Well, simple. Someone took my car. Okay, so long story short. Wow. Um, because of this whole quarantine and virus situation, I am currently out of a job. The car I had was from my job, so now I'm also out of a car. Great. So now that the quarantine had lessened to some extent in Israel, I decided to go camping, you know. Make that a video of how to do an overnight that I promised you. But to do so, I took my bicycle. Because I don't have a car. Because I don't have a job. Yeah, great. Anyhow, I haven't rode a bicycle for a long, long time. And man, now I remember why. Whew! That's it, beat me like I owed him money. Last time, I lost the all of sensation to my nether regions was when I wa binge watched Liv Tyler in that Lord of the Ring trilogy. Damn, elf women are hot. Anyhow, so here I am, trying to catch my breath, barely, and you know, hoping that everything is alright down there. I will keep you posted. I hate bicycles. Roger out. Alright then. So, after I, you know, regain some feeling, let us begin. This is the place where I will attempt to start my camp. This over here is Mr. Nutcracker. And this is the gear I've brought with me. Now, you may remember I made a video about the stuff, the gear you need to begin to get into bushcraft and to actually make a successful overnight out in the wild. Everything I bring here, except for the bicycle of course, is based on that video. So I will show you how to use that gear that I recommended and actually do a successful and rather easy overnight. You know, now let us start. Now, your first dilemma when you begin to make camp is what to begin with. You have two options usually, shelter or fire. Now, if you still have some light hours left, I suggest to start with shelter and then focus on uh, gathering wood for fire and uh, lighting that fire and maintaining that fire. If you have few hours of daylight or even less than an hour then you focus as much as you can on gathering firewood because it is much easier to make your shelter with a headlamp than to gather firewood with a headlamp so if you have any sort of illumination first of all you gather camp uh, you gather firewood then you build your shelter if you have no means of uh, illumination at all and few hours of uh, daylight or even less than an hour of daylight left, well, then it very much depends on the situation. I would go with shelter, usually, not always. Now, to erect our tarp, <laughs> erect, I am sorry, I am very immature. We are going to need two trees that are on rather even ground with few obstructions in between. We will be using these two. The ground here is pretty even and we can remove those stones well either with a shovel or just kick them out of the way. Let's start.
Stupid stone. Get out of here. Oh man. Yeah. Kicking rocks is not fun. But you know what is even less fun? Sleeping on rocks. Yep. Been there, done that. Did not enjoy it. So obviously there are still a few left, but I think we have a clear enough place to raise shelter on. Next step is to make a ridge line between this tree and this tree. And now I will show you how to do it. What is a ridge line? A ridge line is basically a long line, as you can see, this is all my ridge line. A long rope, I'm sorry. And all you need is for one of its end to ends to have a loop like this, a permanent loop, a loop that does not tighten. Tighten. It is rather easy to make. Let me show you how. You take a simple rope. You fold it like this, and you go over and under there you have a non-tightening loop this is the base of your ridge line okay great one thing i forgot to tell you when choosing your campsite make sure you don't have any large branches hanging that might fall on you or any trees that lean extremely towards your direction that branch over there looks a bit suspicious i don't know how safe it is now that i think about it i will try to maybe pull it down let's see okay, okay so after noticing that loose branch I don't know if you see it, right there. I've decided to switch trees and I'm going over these two. It is a bit not ideal because we have these two large tree stumps over here between them, but we can work with it. So now time to set up the ridge line. So to begin our ridge line, we simply move the rope around the tree that we wish to anchor it in and through the non-tightening loop that we've made then we tighten it all up and pull it to the other tree no momentum i've stepped on my rope which is not ideal. Okay. So we are by the other tree. Great. Time to make another loop. All right. So now that we have one of the ends anchored, you want to make, I think is it's called the trucker's hitch but I'm not sure with the names. We want to make a loop that will tighten the entire rope around the trees. Now, other than the one loop in the ridge line, the first one, the original one that I showed, I like to make all my loops and knots easy to untie because sometimes when tension is applied to the knot, it becomes very difficult to untie and it can ruin the entire rope for use or at least make it uncomfortable 
So what we will do here is we will go around once and then pull this one under and through. This makes such, something like this. Now look, if I will pull on this end, it will untie instantly. But if I will make the loop again, same way, and I pull on the loop and on this rope, on this end, on this end, if both of them are pulled, this loop will not be undone and this is what we want to con to connect them we put we pull the loose end of the rope through this secondary loop and we pull we pull it hard <laughs> that sounds so wrong but anyhow that's what we do all right now that we have this, we have tension, and this line, I mean, you can hang a teddy bear off of it. Which reminds me, I forgot my teddy bear. God damn it! It is... Well, I am unable to show you how I tied this last knot, because I need both of my hands to tie it, and I have no one to hold the camera for me, because nobody loves me, and I'm here alone. But it is also an easy to untie knot. You untie it by pulling on this string. And to make sure it does not accidentally untie, we will take a small stick, put it in the loop here, and pull. Ah, damn it! Okay, now that we've pulled it, We've tightened it, there is no way for this knot to be accidentally untied. Um, maybe I will show you how to tie this knot when, you know, when I'm home and my wife can help me with the camera work. But look at this rope, look how tight it is. From this rope we will hang or anchor our tarp or our shelter. To add um, a hold to the rope we will be using a Prusik knot. A Prusik knot is nothing more than a rope tied together at the ends. Doesn't look much, but when you apply it to the rope... So, as I was saying, to apply, when you put it on the rope and apply it properly, you pull the end inside once, inside of itself twice and inside of itself three times you know what let's make it four times for the extra friction because the ridge my ridge line is rather thin and the thicker the rope the prusik is around the more friction uh, surface it has the more effective it becomes so we'll put it four times around then we pull on it to tighten it And now, look, when it is applied, applied pressure to, there is enough friction to actually keep it from moving. Look, I'm pulling with all of my might, and I can't move the knot along the line. But, when we loosen it a little, we can move it easily. When there is pressure, it won't move. Uh, they actually use it quite a lot in climbing and repelling this knot, but this is excellent for for making holds on ropes and other items. It okay. To make things easy, I will attach a carabiner to the Prusik, but to be honest, you don't really need to. You can just tie two loops together, you can use a stick to hold them together. It's really not necessary. If you don't have carabiners, trust me, all you need is ropes. That's good. Now, let's talk tarp shelters, please. 
There are a lot of videos on YouTube of people sleeping in open tarp shelters, like an A-frame or a lean-to. I personally, I'm not saying that they're wrong, but I personally do not like such constructions. The wind, the rain, anything can just become too much of a hindrance. So I teach and preach closed tarp constructions. And that is what we will be doing today. We will put on a tarp that will be closed from all directions. Now, how do we do it? First of all, if you buy a tarp, buy it at least 3 meters by 3 meters. Mine is about 2 meters 70 by 2 meters 80, and I am very sorry that it could not have been larger. So, learn from my mistakes, okay? Now, our first job is to find the center of a tarp. The good tarps have an attachment point at their center. If they don't have an attachment point, you will need to use a field button. I will show you later what it is. There is mine, okay? So we take this and we attach it to the carabiner somehow. Man, this filming is not easy. I need me a, a cameraman. Okay, I will attach this to this and I will show you too. There we go. Okay, it's attached. Now, if you don't have um, an attachment point in your tarp, what you use is f a field button. What does a field button mean? It is using a rope, sorry, a rope and a rock. You put the rock inside the tarp, you put your rope, sorry, a bit more inside the tarp, like this. You put your rope underneath it. You tighten it, there, you have an attachment point. You can pull on it, the tarp will hold, okay? But if you are buying a tarp, do yourself a favor and buy one with as many attachment points as you can. It will make your life much more, well, much easier out in the bush. Now we will prepare our tent stakes. So these stakes have been with me for quite a lot of trips by now and I have some sentimental attachment to them, I don't know why. But unless you're using uh, artificial stakes, what you want is a thick and long enough piece of wood sharpened at one end with a notch on the other. The way you make this notch is, well, I'll show you. First, you take your, well, this is a stick for example, but let's say this is your future tent, uh, your future peg, uh, stake. And you saw a little, um, well, you kind of make a sewing mark on it. You keep sewing until you get to the depth of the notch that you want to have. Please do not sew like I do right now, it is not very safe. I do it because I just want it to be seen on camera. So here you have your small uh, sew cut right here. Then you want to take your knife and you begin to carve into it until the carve, the knife stops where you sewed. Obviously you will want your knife to be sharp, otherwise it is a pain 
And there you have it. A small notch for your rope or whatever. Uh, usually I like to make them deeper, but again, this is just a demonstration. Now, before each trip, well, before I use the stakes, I like to sharpen them a little. I will tell you the complete and honest truth. I don't know if this actually helps anything. But you know what? It's fun and I mean, those are, it's not like this costs money, right? So that's what I do. Looks good. Now here's how we will set up our tarp. If our entrance is going to be from here, we will go to the back of the of what needs to be our entrance and we will connect the two corners of the tarp on each side here. I will show you. So if this is the back of our tarp, wait a moment, it's a bit crooked. Here is the base of our tarp and now we've entered one stake over there and we are in the middle of putting in this stake over here. We're just using good old, you know, primitive technology. Because nothing beats good old stone and there we have it we have our back now I can see there is some room right here and I think that if I will lower the connection between the carabiner and the tarp because it pulls it quite up it will be a bit better. So we've lowered our tarp, providing another carabiner. And now to complete it, we will take both the remaining corners and put them together. We will pull on them and right here we will put in another stake. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, a sort of a pyramid construction. Now, you probably ask, well, how the hell do I get in here, right? Easy. You have a door. Inside it's cozy. I will need to put some back into that space because the ground there is uneven, so one side is higher than the other, which creates some space. But, you know, we will put in some rocks around here, and then with the, shov with the shovel we will throw in some dirt, some leaves, and we are good to go. There we go, for some extra down pressure, I've tied the middle of the back tarp to a large stone and uh, we are quite cozy and uh, nice there shelter how is i just walked into the ridge line great anyhow shelter is pretty much ready all that is left is to put inside the foam map foam mat i'm sorry which is here and the sleeping bag which is there and we are good to go okay so now that we have our shelter we are going to start with fire for fire we have a stick of fat wood here in my video i recommended fat wood but the other option is in my previous video is uh, cotton and vaseline they make great fire starters but i'm sorry I love fatwood, so that's what I roll with. So, 
here we have an old stump we're going to take its bark to use as a fatwood bed and so that we can carry the flame later to the fire I mean obviously this stump is a dead tree so we're not hurting nature or anything like that not bad not bad at all now to shave the fatwood well first we not we don't really shave it we sort of make really 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 light to have feathers onto this bed or bark whatever you want to call it we are going to cut them really really thin because the goal is to start the fire with a fire steel the thinner these feathers or rolls whatever you call it will be the better so we're going to try to make them as thin as possible some people actually use this kind of motion to shave the wood I don't like it it is very abrasive to the knife's edge I mean the, the knife doesn't like it I don't have any problem sharpening my knife but I consider this to be sort of an uh, abuse to its edge so yeah it will take some time and effort but I mean to practice fire starting it's worth it again I speak from my experience and if you have other opinions or if you think that there is a better way of doing something sure I mean I'm not saying that my way is the best way although it certainly is but feel free to disagree with me feel free to do things differently feel free to experiment and be wrong whatever works for you we all find our sort of way of doing things you know there isn't one right way no matter what anyone tells you unless it's my way that way is always right now one thing that you will need for it is a proper sharp knife you can't make these rolls these feathers with a dull knife so get yourself a proper sharpening stone and learn to sharpen your knife outdoors because that's when you'll need it sharp don't be one of those people who and again i'm not disrespecting anyone but if you can only sharpen your knife at home with a sharpening system you may you may be left in the middle of an expedition or anything with a dull blade and i mean Nobody wants that. Also sharpening is fun, I mean, give me a bunch of knives and a sharpening stone and I can sit under a tree for hours sharpening them. Then again, maybe it's just me, I don't know. I have this like a knot in the fatwood that is super annoying because I can't well, I will try to break it off nope hey well I'll baton it away someday meanwhile I'll just work until it and I kind of my knife kind of stops when I hit that area over there but I mean who cares it's just fatwood right I mean I can get more anytime I go out into the forest and and then I have so much of that stuff at home that my wife actually forbids me from bringing any more um, anyone wants fat food by the way I have lots just come over grab some bring a beer for or something like that and we're good
two beers actually would be even better. Three beers, one for you. No, actually, three beers, none for you. Yeah, that's the spirit. Hell, just bring a six pack, okay? That's it. Okay, I won't bore you because I'm going to be carving this for quite a while. Not because I need any more than this, but just because it's fun. And, well, I'm weird. But I'll be back with you once I'm finished carving this. Alright, so now that we have our shelter and cut and ready our fat wood, we're going to make a certain... A <laughs> A small circle of stones like this as you can see somebody had been uh, making fires here before I actually camped here before but this one is not mine make sure that the fire is far enough away from your shelter because the last thing you want is for the flames to make holes in your tarp from small sparks that fly out of it or something like that unless of course you intend to use your fire for heating purposes and then you'll need a reflecting wall and all that that is not for your first overnight okay just make a circle of, sto circle of stones away from your shel shelter next we're going to fill it with wood that will burn we'll make a small tipi fire that is a very effective way to start flame because the the stick stands stand in the same direction that is upwards to where the heat goes so the entire stick gets warmed all the way and makes the sticks burn burst in flames and well heat up the other sticks very very fast unfortunately the downside is that well the sticks burn too fast so you'll you'll need to at some point to collapse your teepee and you begin in a small star fire sort of i'll show you one moment okay so i have started on my teepee construction as you see it's uh, in its early stages so far what we are going to do is we are going to cover these sides while keeping this place open to put here the fat wood and small sticks that will allow for airflow and uh, flame to develop. Now one important thing I forgot to mention, look, when you make fire, make sure to clear a bit around it so there is less chance of a forest fire or anyhow, less chance that the flame that you will start will transfer to areas you don't want them to, you don't want it to go to. So, you know, just in my case, these are pine needles. I'm clearing them as much as I can. And I will continue working on the tipi. Okay, so this is my small construction that I've made. This will be the base of my fire. As you can see, I've put some uh, sticks and pine cones at the bottom of it. I love pine cones as uh, burning material. They catch flame really, really quick and they have a lot of surface area to do so. And the rest is just dry wood that I found here on the wood floor. I didn't even need to sew it off or really work really hard for to collect it. Um, all right, let's light it up. Okay, so now that we have our wood ready for burn, we are going to light up this fat wood and put it in the fire. Wish me luck!
this is a little harder than some people make it look but there we go okay now careful 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 yeah baby there we go and now we're going to put some more little stick on top of it it's really hard to film with one hand and to work with the other but I'll do my best sorry about that okay so this was really hard to film with one hand I apologize so here I've put uh, some larger sticks of fat wood on top of the small shavings and now as you can see the fire gets going I will keep on adding uh, as you can see small uh, sticks for well more kindling than fuel well, well it has enough kindling to be honest but I'll just keep on adding things until this fire is well roaring so to speak there we go ladies and gentlemen we have pine cones oh yeah now as you can clearly see we have flame and the wood is actually on fire the pine cones the wood it's all burning we can see the burn from inside that it's going nicely up along the wood and with really minimal maintenance this will turn into the fire on which we will cook well some of our dinner man look at that flame I like it there we go the flame is full on now it engulfs all the length of the wood which is what a quick tipi fire should be doing and it all started with some fat wood and a fire still not too shabby I'd say look at it it gets higher and higher man <laughs> I'm so happy some people just want to see the world burn Mr. Rain okay yeah that was I think the last good DC movie ever <laughs> quite sad okay so the TP fire collapsed as you can see which is what I was expecting of it I mean it what it's what the fire is supposed to do now that it is collapsed it's just a star fire so to say that's its name I believe and we'll just add the woods on top of it to have a bed of coals on which we will cook so this is good just look at it I mean I know that I'm supposed to go and fetch more wood to feed it but I just can't this is too beautiful I mean I can look at this for hours I shouldn't but I can okay back at you okay so this fire pretty much died out leaving us a bed of coals that is what we'll be cooking on now as this is an as we're trying to you know emulate your first outing into the outdoors I've brought with me the easiest camp food that I can think of and that is canned beans and tuna you know Napoleon once said that an army marches on its stomach well if that's true and I'm not going to argue with Napoleon because I'm afraid of French people they keep sizing up my baguette and make fun of it if that is true the IDF marches on tuna I mean that's pretty much ask any IDF soldier he had eaten so much tuna out in the field that it's just it's not even funny so how will we cook it the beans will simply open and put up on the coals we'll let them uh, boil in their own well, sauce juices whatever that is inside of the can 
and when it will be done it will be pretty tasty it will be hot sizzling i mean it's not good but it's not bad one thing that i have to tell you about canned food is that i do not recommend taking can canned food with you on hikes or trips where you actually have to carry your equipment by yourself they have a very not flattering weight to calories ratio but you know what in this case it will be fine so let's start there we go we've put the beans on top of the coals and i mean you know in no time there will be pretty hot we will cook the tuna a bit differently and that is another method favored by idf soldiers and that is by utilizing the tuna's oil as a burning source we will actually turn this into an oil lamp all we need is a fuse how do we get it well we'll use toilet paper we will put two toilet paper strips or blocks or whatever you call it on top of the tuna one by one and allow the oil to really soak into the toilet paper now one thing that is very very important is never use used toilet paper always make sure you have a clean batch on you because mistakes have been made before not by me by someone else yes that okay so now that we have it we'll take a lighter i'm sorry this is a kind of a bushcraft sheet but whatever wait maybe we should first transfer it somewhere safer ah cable no god damn it i hate filming okay So we will put this on this extremely non-flammable rock, yes, and then we will light up the four corners of the toilet paper. Ah, hot! Okay, three of the corners. I failed to light the fourth one. No, wait, I'll try. Uh-huh, yes. Goddamn it. There we go. Now you may be surprised, but this can burn actually up to around 40 minutes. So in an emergency situation, you can actually use this tuna as a sort of an oil lamp. You can uh, heat your water on it. One of these will not, well, it will be hard to boil water on one of these. It does not produce enough flame for long enough, but two of these, I mean, you can pretty much cook on them. Um, not cook but maybe make tea warm tea <laughs> yeah that and you can easily start fire with them in an emergency situation in fact I once had to use a tuna can to really 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 start the fire fast I just stuck it in under all the wood that I was going to burn lit it on fire just like I did right now and I mean pretty soon I had the fire obviously the tuna was lost in the process anyhow we will let it burn it comes out really tasty in my opinion maybe it's because I didn't eat enough tuna while well, I served <laughs> um, but uh, you should try it let's see how our beans are doing they are already boiling that's good that's really really good okay so now we will give some time for both of these things to cook and later we will have our dinner oh, what time is it now anyway okay time to take the beans off of the fire now we will be using this uh, hot pot ha handle because well this is hot and we don't want to burn ourselves Oh man, this smells good. I promise you, this actually does. Look at this nice little hole. That There was a stone there, but it fits it perfectly. 
and we will grab our tuna now let's see if it got any proper color it's still hot no very nice very very nice I will clean this toilet paper later. I'm just too hungry, I'm sorry. Kind of hot. Okay, this is my dining room, I guess. I will add some zatar onto my spices, eh, onto my beans, I'm sorry. Zatar is a Mediterranean spice that, well, I love to add it to pretty much everything, but People usually say I'm not. And this is my eating multi-tool. Well, bon appetit me. Okay, so I, I promise you, this was tasty. I think that I need some more tuna, but I'm kind of full. So I'll just cover this, the beans, because bugs and stuff. And I'll go rest a bit or something. I've worked hard filming and all that yeah so basically what we've done so far is to find a location build a shelter make fire and cook food so basically all that's left to do is to get drunk and go to sleep now I don't know what about you but that's exactly what I'm going to do well at least the first part stay tuned Good morning, well, it's morning here, anyhow, so we've made it through the night, I'm kind of running out of battery, but what I'll do now, which I guess I won't record because I'm running out of battery, I'll make me a quick breakfast, pack up my stuff, and well, I'll go home, that's our overnight, um, I hope I'll make more videos soon. And I'll hope I'll, I don't know, have more battery next time. See you, dudes.